Hello and welcome to my channel where I do video guides for Omon Futuro 2019. Today we are going to create presets. So this video is all about presets for your photos and presets for exporting your photos. So preset is actually pretty powerful but I think most photographers don't tend to use presets because they know that the light is different from time to time and it's simply not efficient to use a preset but I kind of agree and I feel the same but I have had use for presets before so we're just gonna create one and let's work out of that and see if we can actually apply that presets on more photos than only one so let's just start right now I'm not gonna touch the develop module we are gonna go directly into effects and this is a preset for midday and as you know as a photographer midday photography is kind of not good for landscape photos because the leaves and trees and everything get so incredibly contrasty so we are going to try and <laughs> create a preset where we actually make midday into something more warmer subtle maybe not that harsh but more soft so let's just try and do that so let's say this is kind of an image that I know I'm gonna have use for this preset more times than this it's the same kind of image same kind of light same kind of environment if you want so we're just gonna start another color adjustment so there's a lot of green and there's a lot of different colors down here but I think we will be safe uh, even though we tweak the color adjustment because those colors down there are so dim that there's nothing that's gonna pop out like crazy just because we tweak the colors here. So you can see there's a bit of orange as well in this image so we are gonna go maybe push on the reds because red and orange are pretty close to each other. Let's go to orange up on the saturation. Yeah, let's leave it up there. Up on the yellows. Maybe down on the brightness. Let's up the greens. And just, yeah, up on the brightness. Uh, the aqua, there probably is some aqua here. But even if it's not, we're going to pretend that it is. Because of there are usually some aqua in the sky. So let's just up the saturation. Uh, down the brightness and up the hue and move the aqua more over to the blues the blue we are going to do pretty much the same to something like this maybe and uh, often there's magenta in the sky so we are going to tweak the magenta as well so this is the basic color grading it's not too crazy so it might fit more photographies than only this one. Oh yeah by the way i'm using a new recording software and I don't have any experience with that software at all but I had a crash I made two videos last night both of those videos there were no picture at all only sound so I needed to change so I'm recording in, with OBS studio right now and I really can't say if the quality will be good or not so if you hear me talking about this now the quality was good enough for me but you please comment if the quality is bad from YouTube yeah moving on <laughs> let's go in and let's uh, let's just go to glow so gonna add some glow I don't think we can add too strong a glow even though we are kind of softening down the image let's go down just a little bit and as you might know I usually counter the glow with the dynamic contrast in my experience you <laughs> you can use those two filters to create a basic softness so i'm gonna go down on the opacity and i'm actually gonna go down on the medium and maybe down on the soft or oh, small as well let's go down even more let's up the glow just a bit so yeah i think we have something there so that's dynamic glow color adjustment then we're going to use a filter that you maybe not use as often as you should and that's the bleach bypass it's a really excellent filter you should absolutely try this filter and try and find some 
some photos you can actually use this filtering because as I said it's a really excellent filter. I want to move this uh, to a more warmer picture. It's a bit, yeah, it's not as warm as I think it should be. So let's add some orange. We are basically setting the tint now. So we are like the tint you're using in uh, the develop module on the white balance. We can also change the tint here. So I can move this a lot over to the orange if I want to. So as you can see, it's a really powerful filter. But I want to warm things up here. So I'm going to go to around here. And then maybe down a bit on the opacity. Let's move the amount up. So to something like this maybe. Then I'm actually going to go into the glow and increase the glow completely here. So let's zoom in on this. So what I'm looking for now is to see if this is really harsh. If it's too contrasty. If it is, I would go down on the dynamic contrast. And I think maybe it's a bit too contrasty, especially in the pine trees here. So maybe go down just a little bit more. Don't want to go down too much though. Yeah, something like that. And let's increase the saturation on the greens and yellows just a little bit. Just up to there maybe. Okay, so let's add a tone announcer. Uh, we are going to move the shadows up. That bleach bypass, it usually makes your photo darker. You can use the brightness inside the filter, but uh, I'm using a tone announcer anyway. So that's just simplicity. Keep it simple. So I kind of like this for this photo, but it might be a bit too much. So. Let's go up even more on the shadows to something like this maybe. And let's see how it turns out with the negative value on the details. Because as I said initially, uh, daylight photos are usually very harsh. So it might feel unnatural to go into the negatives on contrast, but I think it's a good idea to do this for this image or for this day of time with this kind of environment, that's what I'm trying to say here. So, yeah, I think that's okay actually. And let's just go up on the compression. And now you can, if you want, add, for example, a split toning. Split toning is a really excellent tool. It's much like bleach bypass, so it might be too much, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So, we are going to go to the orange on the highlights because, as I said, we want to warm this image up. We want to create kind of feeling of a, yeah, like it's close to sunset, not midday. So we are moving the orange. Let's uh, go in and basically choose a complementary color. Everyone will say that you should use a complementary color for split only, but <laughs> I use just whatever I want, so I don't listen to that, but you can see this is not a complementary color, but it could work, right? Just go down on the amount, uh, just, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to use this color, but you see, it could work. <laughs> so those rules that people are telling you, just ignore them. There are no rules in art. Maybe something like that. It's not doing much for this photo. So uh, you might want to increase the amount on the orange. So maybe something around there. And then we'll go in on the tone announcer and make it just a bit darker. To something like this. And let's just check how the color temp. If we go up on the color temp, how that looks. That was the wrong filter. So we're adding a color enhancer. Let's go up on the yellows. Let's also go up on the tint. Let's check the glow again. Let's go up just a little bit. Let's increase the vibrance. Okay, so then we have the sky. It's looking kind of unnatural, actually. So let's go 
in and try and find some balance here. <laughs> so I'm going down on the highlights. Let's increase the exposure. Also, this guy is practically blown anyway, so that's the reason why it's so goddamn bright. And often in these kind of pictures, uh, there are some haze because it's a midday and it's really warm and uh, you know the trees are colder so it creates kind of a haze in the background so we're gonna go into develop and actually go down just a little bit on the haze to something like this and then go up on the shadows again so I'm just trying different things on the tone announcer and let's go in and create some more softness here so I'm gonna go down on the large and just a bit more on the small and the medium I think maybe drop the split tone it's a bit too much and let's go in here and go down on the saturation on those two it's a bit too much as well so so here's kind of the last part I would add to a preset so I'm just gonna add the big softy and let's go up on the brightness and the size I'm just gonna check it's a bit too round actually I'm gonna go down on the roundness and down on the size so this is the basic toning that you can do in a preset so we'll create a kind of a softer feeling that it's not midday but it's maybe starting to move over to uh, night and yeah so we need to save this preset so let's go up to uh, settings and save settings as preset so i'm going to do that i'm going to call this warm midday and here you can select to save it in a category I'm going to save it to the demo on one category and here you have the settings so if you've done any changes inside the develop settings keep that box ticked if you haven't uh, keep it unticked yeah warm midday so that's fine so you can see that this is kind of the same day actually this is kind of softer have I done something to it no I haven't yeah here we are <laughs> there was some kind of stuff left there <laughs> okay so let's uh, go over to this pane on the left side let's just click out and here we need to find our preset so i think it was demo on one and here you can see a little preview of your preset let's just click it and there we are so whatever we made from that filter now we can start working on it so we could for example go up on the shadows and that lifts the image and we could actually say that this image is done maybe some dodge and burn and tweak the vignette and move over to the next one so let's do the same here let's go into the preset and click that one and this needs a bit tweaking as you can see maybe up the shadows and definitely some contrast as well because this wall is kind of flat so maybe some sharpening uh, let's go up on the contrast uh, that actually helped a lot i would maybe paint in some sharpening or texture on these rocks here but raising the shadows that did a lot maybe go down slightly on the highlight yeah maybe add some black and you could basically call this image done maybe some dodge and burn maybe brighten up the blue hair i think it's a bit too heavy and paint in the sharpening but of course we have saved time by adding all of those uh, effects that can lift this image up and make it seem like it's not shot directly <laughs> on the midday because as you could probably imagine this would be really harsh it would be too strong it would steal focus from everything else here 
Okay, do we have more images here? No, I don't think so. So hopefully this video inspires you to make some presets that you can use over and over again on different images and that it will save you time. But of course, if you do this kind of toning and you're toning very heavy like we did now, you might need to adjust it. But that preset will be a preset for a certain light. When you tweak it this heavy, you can't use it on all presets. So if you use this preset <laughs> under golden hour, it would look too orange and too crazy, just so we know. But let's jump over to the export presets. So let's say I want to export this preset for Instagram. So let's take this watermark away. And I like to sharpen my images. And for um, Instagram, I actually kind of tend to use screen medium for sharpening and I use this or these options for my file type except I would use uh, sRGB on the color color profile yeah and the location to whatever location you want to have and maybe current name and then text and let's say we want to call this uh, my Instagram Program export <laughs> preset. <laughs> really a long name. <laughs> okay, so let's say you're exporting for pre uh, Instagram and you know that, yeah, it should probably do something about the file size. You can go up to photo size. Oops, there. <laughs> and under resize too, you could select, for example, long edge and <laughs> Instagram usually is 1080. I think that's the that's what you should put on the long edge, but I'm not entirely sure. So if you want to make Instagram presets, please check that out and confirm it. Anyway, 1080. So cool. This is all I want in the preset. Maybe you want to have the watermark if you have one. And then you just tick the boxes, tick the options you want. And then you go down to this little thing. I'm not sure you can actually even make out what it says on this video, but it says presets. And you just click that. And you go to uh, save. Save new preset with current settings. And then you just call it uh, my IG export preset. Great. And then you have this for all of your Instagram pictures. So that's uh, that's actually brilliant. Uh, I do some exports to Instagram, and by just having that preset, it saves me a long, lot of time. So I can just click that preset, click export, then I'm done, uh, and I don't have to think about uh, Instagram resizing the image after the export because every time you resize the image and compress it, you lose data. So it's going to be just a bit sharper if you do the resize yourself. So that's it. That's this video. I hope maybe you learned something. And uh, <laughs> I hope that the video has a decent quality and it's not jerky and everything. I hate jerky videos. I know that the sound in my microphone is a lot better. So that's one thing that's positive by this. By doing changed in the software I mean well that's it yeah if you want to buy Omo Photo Raw 2019 you can do so by clicking the link in my description that will give you 10% off when you check out if you like this video please click that thumbs up and if you want to watch more videos from me hit that uh, subscribe button thanks a lot for watching uh, hope to see you again